Here's a first look at Dramatron by DeepMind out of London. It's a script writing prompt for Chinchilla 70B. And after they generated four scripts, they performed some of them at the largest festival in North America. I've been spending some time getting my head around what they actually did here with Dramatron. It's really kind of cool. They took the Chinchilla model and they prompted it with some clever prompts to get the results. First, a bit of backstory. So I've worn a lot of hats in my life. One of the hats that I wore was as a live sound designer for theatre, concerts, musicals, that kind of thing. Don't ask me how I found the time to do any of this, but I really got to see inside of these industries, particularly how the staff worked. I reckon staff in theatre work maybe 10x, a thousand percent of what everyone else does. I remember working with a writer in Melbourne who was writing for one of the largest shows in the world. It ended up being the most famous play or famous show in Australia. It played five and a half months here in Perth and it outdid shows like Phantom and Les Mis elsewhere in Australia. He got so stressed during the rewrites of this show and uh, writing this down, faxing it through to the rehearsal room, getting all this uh, feedback from legal and compliance <laughs> that he actually was focusing so hard that his retina detached. So he ended up in surgery from this stress through writing. This is where Dramatron comes in. So DeepMind took Chinchilla, which is the largest current model available. If we were to compare it with GPT-3, for example, which only used 300 billion tokens, it used 1.4 trillion tokens in its training. It would be the largest model Currently, it's definitely using the largest known data set and it would look a lot like this. Dramatron is just one of the latest explorations into what we can do with Chinchilla. They did have Flamingo where they fed Chinchilla into a visual model. And of course, Sparrow we've talked about as a rule-based dialogue model. But Dramatron is just using complex prompts to write amazing scripts, either for film, television, or in what we'll see in a moment for theatre. The writers were actually quite experienced already with using GPT-2 or GPT-3 for generating stories. And we know that GPT-3 can write books. We've, you've seen the slide where it's written a number of books. Here's some of the quotes that the writers came out with while they were using Dramatron. So these are from 15 different experts that sat in the lab with DeepMind and played around with this chinchilla model prompted to become Dramatron. This really felt so much cleaner than the process I was using via GPT-3. You know, with a bit of editing, I could take that to Netflix. Just need to finesse it a little bit. Practically, it might impact the economics of writing if longer running series could be augmented by such writing systems. It might be useful on long running series where you have a writer's room. This is perfect for writer's block. And AI can come up with five scripts in five minutes. The mechanism that these 15 expert writers were using via Dramatron, via Chinchilla, was essentially complex prompt crafting using hierarchical or recursive generation. So you generate the title first and then the plot uh, and then the beats inside that plot, then the characters, and then you would finally write the dialogue. You could absolutely do this with any model. They've said that you could do this with GPT-3, though of course they were using Chinchilla being DeepMind and also the fact that it's the most powerful model made it have some really cool outputs. With this kind of recursive prompt crafting and this generation of responses, they're getting around the context window limit. So remember, for some of the models, you get up to a 2048 token context window, which means probably about 1500 words that you can fit prompt and response in, and you can't go beyond that. So when we're writing books, we're doing some pretty clever stuff to generate paragraphs or pages at a time, but we can't write the whole book by itself. Chinchilla was doing the same kind of thing using prompt chaining, taking the best and consolidating it all together. So they got past that 1500 word limit 
and they got towards what you would actually need to generate some of these big plays. Consider some of the biggest plays that have been around. From the 35,000 word streetcar to 33,000 word Glengarry Glen Ross. Then we get down to Shakespeare's stuff, 24,000 words for Romeo and Juliet, 16,000 words for Midsummer Night's Dream. These are still quite big. If a book is 50,000 words, a, a screenplay might be just smaller than that. The DeepMind team were able to get slightly shorter in this case, screenplays or theatre scripts written around the 2,000 word mark. Here's the first one. The Day the Earth Stood Still. 1.6 thousand words. It's about cars outnumbering humans. It's got Miranda, a mechanic, and her sister Beth playing around with saving the world. Cheers at 2.1 thousand words about a waitress and her best friend who's a teacher and how they play around with that relationship. The Black Unicorn at 1.6 thousand words. This one's really funny. It's about Greta and her pet dragon named Nugget. And the last one, The Man at the Bar. Teddy, who's in love with Rosie. And here's the full plot synopsis of each of those four, all generated by AI via Chinchilla using Dramatron for prompt crafting. After they generated many different scripts, they took four of them, and one of the 15 experts that DeepMind had in the room was also pretty well connected, so he decided to take it and perform it in real life. And he didn't choose a very small venue. In fact, he chose a massive, massive venue. In Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, is the largest international fringe festival in the world besides Edinburgh. It's definitely the largest fringe festival in North America. And apparently it's larger than our Adelaide Fringe Festival here in Australia, which was supposed to be the second largest. But it's very, very well attended. They did 1,200 shows in August 2022. And Rapid Fire Theatre took the Chinchilla outputs and performed seven shows over two weeks, giving audiences a view of what these four different scripts would look like in real life. Rapid Fire Theatre's subtitle was Plays by Bots. Bots write scripts, performers act them out, then they improvise the ending, hilarity ensues. I went and dug up the poster for this. August 2022, Plays by Bots by Rapid Fire Theatre. And if we scroll down the bottom here, you'll notice their slogan. We asked an actual bot to read the whole internet, then we asked it to write a play. This is the hilarious results with some shout outs to the DeepMind team there. I couldn't find any actual clips from the performance, but I don't think that would fit into copyright anyway. Here is one image that they released from one of the shows. This is Rapid Fire Theatre performing Cars the Day the Earth Stood Still. And you'll see the different characters that came out, again, generated by artificial intelligence. So Chinchilla came up with these characters and how they fit into the world. Let's just go ahead and watch a recreation of this. I'm using Sonantic.io for the voice, for the audio. Remember they did Val Kilmer's voice in Top Gun and a whole bunch of other stuff. Have a listen and there's some stock footage so you can have a watch of the background here. Sonantic.io has just been bought up by Spotify so you can't actually use this tech anymore. I've got about six months or so left on my license for me to play around with these kinds of voices. But I've just fed in a very, very small snippet of script so that you can go and have a watch and a listen. Here's a little snip from Cheers, written by Chinchilla, voiced by Sonantic.io. Ola, I wanted to tell you about the new friend I met. Oh, that's wonderful. He is a writer and he owns a business. So what is his business? Well, he makes books. Books? Yes, and he makes all different kinds of books. He is not only a writer, but a publisher. That's wonderful. I love books. He also makes a lot of money. Money? Oh, yes, money. His name is Evan. I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. Let me see. 
How do you pronounce it? Hell, I'm not even sure how to say it. He's French, and the first part of his name is pronounced Re. I think I know how to say his name. It's pronounced Rhys or maybe Rhysé. Yeah, that's how I pronounce it. It's a little fancy for me, but I'll try to remember it. I would like you to meet him. I'd love to meet him. Why don't I bring him here for lunch? Yes, that would be wonderful. I'll ask him here tomorrow. Wonderful. I'll call him right now. There we go. There were a couple of reviews that came out of this and they were uh, kind of a little bit surprised. I think some of them were a little bit concerned that artificial intelligence is already writing for us. Here's the first one. This performance proves that artificial intelligence can in fact write a hit fringe play. And this one, you can go and read the full review by Twelfth Night. The surprising thing, surprising to me anyhow, is that the whole Dramatron play does hang together and create a world. It's a genuinely funny entertainment. Uh-oh. This was a really fun prompted model to look at, just to be able to read the papers for the largest model that's currently available, the most high performance model as well. They've done an exceptional job here with what is pretty simple. We, I can say it's clever prompting and the way that they've done it hierarchically is clever, but you can go and recreate it yourself in minutes and then of course generate a script. Like they said, you could generate five scripts in five minutes once you've got the process down. You could play around with this in Megatron 11B via InferKit or GPT-3 via the Playground. And I've listed maybe a hundred other models that are available these days to go and play around with. To have one of the largest AI labs in the world use their model for entertainment and to use it for what it is probably going to be applied to by humans day to day is not surprising, but it's really tangible. It's really visceral, something you can go and grab onto. The entertainment industry, of course, is going to be transformed by this picture. Like one of the experts from Dramatron said, picture rewriting entire Netflix series with this. Picture adding to the Game of Thrones or to old Friends episodes or entire new series, entire new worlds being thought up by artificial intelligence. All of that now is actually ready. And we've got the text to video generation and we've got the transformer audio generation like SymphonyNet. So it's not that any of this stuff is futuristic anymore. You can write the script, generate the video, generate the sound, and away you go. The next stage, of course, is fully immersive environments. And I think that may take a little bit of time for the technology to catch up to the public. But of course, you've got things like Oculus that you can go and sit inside and immerse yourself in these worlds. A quick personal note, I wanted to just thank my paid subscribers to the memo that have shown up and contributed so fully. It keeps me as an independent AI consultant rather than answering to any one AI lab or government or having sponsorships. It's actually 100% the general public that contribute to what I do. That includes some big universities, of course. So there are readers from Stanford and MIT and Berkeley and elsewhere. And there are big labs that are watching and reading as well. So thank you to paid subscribers from Google and Tesla and Microsoft and all around the block. But the number one supporter really is the general public. That's who I'm writing and creating for and bringing in all of these different angles. Not representing a particular lab means that I can tie them all together. So we've got DeepMind today, we had OpenAI a couple of days ago, and I don't mind tying in everyone from a Luther to Google and documenting it all. Your monthly cup of coffee contribution funds this, so thanks again for contributing. If you're not a subscriber to the memo already, if you're not a paid contributor, please consider jumping in. It drives what I do here and supports absolutely every report, every video that I create. See you soon. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah, didn't you get that memo? Life Architect 
www.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai.ai